Good evening and welcome to the prestigious Gordon Prize Award Ceremony. Please welcome the Dean of the USC Viterbi School of Engineering, Giannis Yortzos. Good evening. It's wonderful to host again this year in the very same Epstein Plaza. Our esteemed colleagues from the National Academy of Engineering as well as members of the Gordon Prize Selection Committee. On behalf of USC President Ford, who cannot at could not attend tonight's event due to an emergency, and, the, um, and on behalf of the President of the National Academy of Engineering, John Anderson, who is here, obviously, it is with great pleasure to, that welcome, I welcome everyone to this very special event. The award of the NAE's prestigious Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and Technology Education. I do not know if it is the weather or the excellence of our faculty that causes this event to be held at the USA campus for an unprecedented second time in a row. I would incline towards the second, the excellence of our faculty. Actually, the weather is not that great today, but it was raining in DC last Friday when I was there. So that is an advantage <laughs> that we have here. Tonight, we recognize the exceptional engineering education innovation of USC University professor and NAE member, Azad Madni. Before, before we proceed, I would like to acknowledge some special guests. I'd like to acknowledge the presence with us here of the NAE president, John Anderson, the CEO of the NAE, Al Romick, who is here somewhere. From the USC administration, we have the current provost, Elizabeth Craddy, who is here, and the incoming provost, who starts July 2nd, I think, or maybe July 1st, uh, Andrew Guzman, who is here with us today. i like also to acknowledge a number of our uh, NAE members who are here today, and I will go with all uh, I hope I won't miss anyone. Petro Ioannou, Barocco Snevis, Iraj Zersaghi, Ali Molesh, Effie Fufula Georgiou. Effie came all the way from UC Irvine. Good to have you here, Effie. <laughs> uh, Chip Zukowski and his wife, Barbara. Uh, Bill Ballhouse. Maxine Savitz. Maxine is here. Maxine has been a phenomenal member of the Academy for many, many years. She is just a, ju a jewel of the Academy. Thank you for being here, Maxine. Um, Neil Siegel. Diana Chong, who is here as part of the committee as well. Vijay Deer. Where is Vijay? Vijay is the former Dean of Engineering at UCLA. So uh, <laughs> Vijay came all the way from, from, uh, from uh, UCLA to here, along with Ali Molesh, who is also at, the, uh, at UCLA. And I believe I did not mention Gerard, Gerard Midioni, who was just elected to the Academy, as well as Geraldine Nutz, who is also here with us today. So these are members of the National Academy who are here. So we are really very uh, pleased to see so, such a support of the members of the National Academy here in Los Angeles to come in here and support this event. I should also mention um, Two members of my board of councillors, which is uh, Stace Harris, Stace is here, as well as Bill Ballhouse. Um, and I would, should, I should also um, uh, not uh, uh, ignore, <laughs> and I should mention, Monique Allard, which is a senior vice president for students, she's there, as well as uh, David Wright, who is senior ad, ad, uh, vice president for administration. And so, thank you for being here and helping celebrate this important event. I will now say a little bit of a history. Azad mentioned about, um, I forgot to, to introduce Carla, he's Azad's wife, she's here. And we also have my wife Cheryl, she's here too. <laughs> and we also have the youngest person in attendance, not a member of the National Academy yet, he's eight weeks old. He is, he is Azad's grandson. His name is Kaden. <laughs> uh, 
The Epstein Family Plaza we are gathered here today is the historic center of USC engineering. It's part of the USC campus that has its, its um, center here. It is delineated by Bigler Hall, which is that building, which is the, a, a building that was built in the 1940s for $44,000, just in case you didn't know that. All in Hall to my left, which was built in the 60s. And Vivian Hall to my right over there, which was also built in the 60s. The architecture of Olin and Vivian Hall was designed by eminent architect William Pereira in the 60s. Both these buildings cost $2.7 million each. So now you can understand how the prices have changed over the years. We're building a new building for computer science in that direction that is likely to cost us $130 million just giving you an idea of how things have changed. Along with Bigler Hall, they are of course considered historic, these buildings, meaning they cannot be rebuilt, at least in the outside. Historic is also the rather boxy building behind me, which is built in the early 70s, that one over there. This is the definitely unimaginative name PCE, which stands for Petroleum and Chemical Engineering. I mean, we could have come up with a better name than simply calling it PCE. <laughs> so maybe we should go cases here and identify a donor who would like to put his name on this and not be called PCE <laughs> anymore. <laughs> California has a rather interesting definition of historical, which is very amusing to people like myself who grew up with a different definition of the term. I'm taking you through this short tour to recount a little story about Olin and Vivian Halls. Olin Hall was built through a gift from the Olin Foundation, established in 53 by John Olin, president of the oil industry's chemical and munitions manufacturing businesses. The gift was estimated to capture the entire cost of the building, and it was about 2.7 million, as I mentioned before. When completed, the building cost less than originally anticipated. There was a surplus. Imagine ending construction under budget. The university and then uh, uh, Dean of Engineering had a decision to make. They made the right one. They informed the foundation of the surplus of funds and they were ready, prepare, and they were prepared to return the extra funds back to the foundation. And here is where more history was made. Impressed by this transparency and ethics, not only did the foundation not accept the remaining funds, but instead provided additional one to help build another hall, symmetric to all in that hall over here, which is now named after Dean Robert Vivian. So this very interesting story tells you how the world has been moving and how it has changed over the years. In our times where such trustworthiness is hard to come by, this is an uplifting and inspiring example. But it is one that cannot remain a quaint moment of the past. Such ethical values demonstrated 60 years ago in this plaza will increasingly be needed in all aspects of technology development. Indeed, in today's world where technology and humanity are increasingly intertwined, a human-centric focus is essential. And in many ways, as such transdisciplinary systems engineering innovation, which focuses a lot on the human dimension, becomes a new definition for systems engineering, designing under constraints, and creating uh, various projects. It is expanding the domain to capture not only technical readiness, as I mentioned before, but also its rapidly emerging sibling of societal readiness for technology. It is this combined conversion in some way that we're celebrating today. It's now my pleasure to introduce the university's next provost and senior vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Andrew Guzman. As I mentioned, Dr. Guzman will be the incoming provost. He's not there yet. <laughs> He's the dean of the USC Gould School of Law, where he has worked to elevate his institutional presence locally, nationally, and globally. He's a renowned legal scholar and economist, an innovative academic leader with decades of experience building programs across multiple disciplines while putting students first. We are excited for him to begin his new role on July 1st. Please welcome my colleague for, to for tonight and my boss, maybe on July 1st, Dr. Andrew Guzman. <laughs> Good
Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, welcome to everybody. Let me first, uh, on behalf of President Folt, pass on her regrets at not being able to be here. I know she was uh, very eager for this evening, but unfortunately was not able to make it. Uh, so you get me instead. So, you know, you can see big trade down. Uh, so tonight we have the opportunity to honor a visionary pioneer who breaks boundaries not so much by disrupting disciplines as by uniting them. And that's university professor Azad Madni. It's been a banner year for Azad. In addition to the Gordon Prize, he won the IEEE Simon Ramo Medal for Exceptional Achievements in Systems Engineering. That's the highest award for lifetime achievement in systems engineering. I should add it's been a banner year for the Viterbi School. This is the second year in a row that a Viterbi faculty member has received the Gordon Prize. Uh, Giannis won it uh, last year. Azad has played an outsized role in serving in ensuring the accolades for Viterbi. He's nominated more than 60 faculty, students, and staff for awards during his tenure here. He's also an inspiring teacher, mentoring more than 25 PhD students. His spirit of giving is strong. Tonight, we turn our focus on the ways Azad has given back to us. Now, some of you may know that his first love was the fine arts. He was born and raised in Bombay, India, and studied painting as a teen for four years with Lady Marie Temple, a local professional British, British artist. As he'll tell you, art was my passion, science was my curiosity. Azad decided to focus his engineering interests on space after he heard President Kennedy's famous we choose to go to the moon speech. He came to the United States by himself to study engineering. And all three of his degrees, BS, MS, and PhD in engineering, were in from a technical school down the street. I think it's pronounced UCLA. I apologize if I got that wrong. Living out his curiosity, as he called it, he got his first job with Rockwell International as a lead simulation engineer in the first space shuttle mission program. Azad has worked in industry and even ran his own groundbreaking company, Intelligent Systems Technology, Inc. But academia was always in his future, and he arrived at USC in, 20, in 2004 as a full professor. He now holds appointments in Viterbi, Keck, and Rossier. I don't know where my law school didn't get him. We've got to work on that. Uh, in his work, Azad, too, chose to go to the moon. In 2021, he won the Judith Resnick Award for Excellence in Space Engineering the same year he was elected to the NAE. Azad has also won more than 75 other prestigious awards during his career. The 2019 IEEE Aerospace and Electronic Systems Pioneer Award and the 2011 Pioneer Award from the International Council on Systems Engineering, better known as INCOSI. INCOSI also awarded him the 2012 Exceptional Achievement Award, recognizing his focus on the need to reverse the stovepipe stove approach that had stifled innovation in engineering and other fields. Azad knew that while siloed islands of knowledge worked for 20th century problems, a multidisciplinary approach would be needed for 21st century issues. And not just any multidisciplinary approach. In 2013, he began work on TRACI, which stands for Transdisciplinary, Transdisciplinary Systems Engineering Education Environment. Since then, he's pioneered what has become both a field and an educational paradigm. Along the way, Azad never forgot about his top priority, his students. He wanted them to grasp complex engineering problems that require other fields. So he brought together the entertainment arts and engineering through storytelling. Azad now helps students tell stories in virtual worlds, letting them explore alternative futures to solve engineering problems in the present from how planes can land in adverse conditions to how USC security systems can react to abnormal circumstances. He likes to say a picture is worth a thousand words, a model is worth a thousand pictures, and a story is worth a thousand models. The impact of Tracy on his ad students has been incredible. Many have launched their own innovative startups. Others have, are working in top leadership positions at leading companies. All speak to Azad's leadership as an educator, thinker, and mentor. Now, I mentioned earlier that it's been a banner year for Azad. It's also Tracy's 10th anniversary. So many great things ahead, Azad, and we wish you so much continued success. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Andrew. You've been very busy with Viterbi events lately. Andrew told me that when he was announced as uh, the incoming provost uh, a month ago, he has attended four Viterbi events. I think we should give you uh, an office somewhere here so we can shorten your commute <laughs> when you come in here. <laughs> In 2004, the National Academy of Engineering compiled the tw top 20 engineering achievements of the 20th century in a report edited by Neil Armstrong, whose statue, statue is uh, to my right. You will see it over there. As many of you know, Neil was a USC alumnus in addition to being at Purdue, having earned a master's degree in aerospace engineering after his trip to the moon. We have evidence of this. There's actually a, a, a tape that, uh, that uh, um, uh, captures the defense of his thesis. During those times, get, uh, having a master's thesis was required. Nowadays, <laughs> it's not exactly the same thing anymore. These 20 top engineering achievements, from the airplane to pharmaceuticals, all involve elaborate systems, many of a transdisciplinary nature, just like Azad's work is on cyber-physical human systems. We prepare a short video to present the key aspects of Azad's engineering education innovation, and to learn about this, his incredible and inspirational journey, please turn your attention to the screen. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. It was John F. Kennedy's We Go to the Moon speech that got me really excited about the space program. I came to the U.S. as an undergrad to study engineering and was fortunate enough to have my first course in system engineering from Professor Alexander Bolderev, and thus began my journey as a systems engineer. Over the years, I was fortunate to work for Rockwell International on the NASA Space Shuttle program. After that, I joined the startup. We took it public. It was a great success. After that, I started my own company. I ran it for two decades, and after that, joined USC to bring that knowledge and know-how into academia. With decades of research, I was able to raise the ceiling of technology, but through education today, I'm able to raise the floor of humanity. At this stage of my career, I was convinced that system engineering needed to look beyond the engineering disciplines. I called that the transdisciplinary system engineering approach. Systems engineering is a quintessential definition of engineering. It was substantially advanced by Cy Ramo, one of the co-founders of the National Academy of Engineering and the founder of TRW, who also held a presidential chair at USC. In 1987, Eberhard Rechtin was recruited by engineering dean Leonard Silverman to launch a new program in systems architecting and engineering. Rectin, formerly chief architect and director of NASA's Deep Space Network, is widely viewed as the father of systems architecting. After Rectin, Elliot Axelband became SAE director, but USC Viterbi's SAE program underwent a transformational change in 2009 when Azad Modney was recruited to lead the program. Modney introduced a new educational paradigm, Tracy, that redefined the teaching of systems engineering for the 21st century. Tracy is intended to inculcate a new interdisciplinary mindset and leadership skills in students. Its six pillars are a transdisciplinary mindset, exploiting concepts from cognitive psychology, biology, social sciences, and economics to expand the frontiers of systems engineering thinking. Principles from the learning sciences, ensuring delivery of connected knowledge to students. Learning should be learner-centric, learning should build on prior knowledge, and learning should allow the learner to extrapolate to new problem situations. Diversity in role assignments, assuring balanced student representation during project-based learning to enhance the diversity of thought, backgrounds, and cultures in project teams. Storytelling as a pedagogical strategy, employing concepts from the entertainment and cinematic arts as a teaching strategy where role-playing and interaction-rich scenarios foster learner engagement, material retention and transfer, and recall. Hands-on learning with digital twins, exploiting the growing convergence of model-based systems engineering and digital engineering to allow students to innovate while increasing their knowledge of system verification and validation testing. Dynamic assessment of thinking and innovation skills, which gauges students' ability in real-world problem-solving. 
teaching them skills such as troubleshooting, critical and creative thinking, lateral thinking, and systems thinking. As a systems engineer, you're a big picture thinker. So you're not the one that's just sitting there developing the requirements, but you have to be the integrator and you have to work across all disciplines. With his new methodology and way of teaching is bringing a new light to system engineering. It's nearly impossible to do something transformative nowadays being in a silo. Transdisciplinary system engineering, those are exactly the type of skills that were needed to build this artificial retina. Professor Madney he has expanded this uh, concept very significantly and actually very originally. We need transdisciplinary approach and the great thing about this program is it's taught in an educational program that is first rate through USC, graduating students making an impact. The approach that Professor Madney brings to system architecting and systems engineering is very, very consistent with the lessons that I learned in my almost 40 years in the Air Force. What he has done truly has transformed things. Whatever he has done in his career has an, had a major impact on the way engineers are going to think. Me and his other students, the way that he shaped our thinking, this is going to live forever. His contributions have really molded a, a new generation of system engineers. He's definitely been an advocate for the diversity of engineering. Uh, and really bringing out talents that otherwise would be in the shadows. When we got together, his students, we were all different. I mean, we were all different backgrounds, different experiences, and that brought something unique to the solution. His ability to uh, attack very difficult problems in an understandable way and to inspire students to solve problems and make a difference in the world, he really is one of a kind. We are very happy to have him receive this award and to show that a lot of interest in engineering, education, innovation, and research happens here at USC Viterbi. To me, there is no greater calling than being an effective educator. Nelson Mandela said, education is the ultimate weapon that you need to change the world. As the video vividly demonstrated, systems engineering, particularly transdisciplinary systems engineering, is quintessential to engineering itself. I will add one more thought. I will borrow from historian of technology, Brian Arthur. I, I always think of engineering and technology as leveraging phenomena and systems and artifacts for useful purposes. Historically, these phenomena were in order of increasing complexity, first physical, then chemical, then biological, including medical, and more recently, behavioral and social. This is where engineering is capturing all this complexity of phenomena. They all involve complex combinations and interrelations, namely inter- and transdisciplinary systems and design under constraints. Azad's contribution is exactly this convergence driven for useful purposes. The latter is where human centricity arises in useful purposes. And as we move at an exponentially increasing space with new technologies, with AI being a key example, we hope that a strong human-centric focus, just as illustrated with the All-In Foundation example, will help us achieve a br bright future one in which we will solve key grand challenges we face and also help engineer a better world for all. It's now my pleasure to introduce our student speaker for this evening. Mary Lee Whitton, earned a master's degree in systems engineering from USC Viterbi, is now a systems engineering research center fellow, completing her PhD in our systems architecting and engineering program. She's also currently a systems engineering fellow at the Aerospace Corporation where she's also responsible for providing technical leadership and building capability across the company. She has served as one of our adjunct faculty members for over a decade, a decade within the Systems Architecting and Engineering Program. She's an award-winning member of countless societies and organizations. She's a fellow and life member of the Society of Women Engineers, for which she served as past president of the Los Angeles chapter and a senior member of IEEE. 
please welcome the very accomplished and very busy Mary Lee Whitten. Good evening. I am honored to say a few words on the occasion of this wonderful and well-deserved recognition of Professor Azad Mani. I have known Azad Mani since 2006, having first met him at the Conference on Systems Engineering Research, CSER. I have known him in multiple capacities as an industry colleague, a collaborator in the USC Center for Systems and Software Engineering, director of the SAE program in which I taught for uh, several years, and now as my doctoral degree advisor. So I really have a unique perspective on Dr. Mani's accomplishments as an engineering leader, researcher, educator, and mentor. Systems engineering is undergoing a transformation motivated by mission and system complexity and enabled by technological advances such as model-based systems engineering, digital engineering, formal modeling, and the convergence of systems engineering with other disciplines. Dr. Modney has been at the forefront of this transformation and in fact, leading it with his pioneering research that led to the formalization of the field of transdisciplinary systems engineering, and as you have heard, the creation of the Tracy educational paradigm for which he has been honored with the Gordon Prize. As the current president of the International Council on Systems Engineering, which is the premier society for systems engineering in the world, I believe I have a sound understanding of how the field is viewed not just here in the US, but also in other countries. It is fair to say that the international community looks up to Dr. Madney, not only for his vision, but also for his guidance in moving the field forward. A recipient of numerous prestigious awards and accolades throughout his career, Dr. Madney pays it forward by successfully nominating his colleagues in both industry and academia for awards and honors. He has nominated his engineering students for numerous awards and honors, with most of all nominations being successful. In 2021, Nkozi honored him with the Benefactor Award, which was only the second time in the 33-year history of Nkozi that this award was made. He was specifically honored for his philanthropy and mentoring of systems engineering students from across the globe who are all better off because of his abiding commitment to improve the quality of life of engineers worldwide. One of the key criteria for the Gordon Prize and the intent of the donor, Bernard Gordon, in endowing this prize was to enhance U.S. engineering leadership, to foster the development of engineering leaders through innovative educational programs. Dr. Modney's students today are the who's who across diverse industries, including aerospace, automotive, transportation, health sciences, as well as social media companies. Over the years, he has been magnanimous with his time and continues to mentor and guide his students, and in some cases, their kids, with the career advice and career change advice. All his doctoral students have a cell phone number. They could text or call at any time to seek his advice. I know this personally, it's true. Um, his seminal book, Transdisciplinary Engineering, was studied by the Nkozi Fellows over several months before engaging with the final Q&A with Professor Modney. This was a defining moment for systems engineers in that it reset their mindset for confronting 21st century challenges. His ability to exploit the synergy between engineering, humanities, and arts is unparalleled in our field. For example, his innovative use of storytelling and experiential and immersive design have greatly enhanced the understanding and added value that other disciplines bring to the systems engineering domain. Equally important, he has shown how systems engineering adds value to other disciplines in terms of thinking, structure, and perspectives. Always gracious and generous, he is a role model for researchers, educators, and practitioners worldwide. He continues to serve as a mentor to early career faculty and systems engineers in industry, not just in the US, but globally. In summary, I believe the NAE could not have selected a more deserving recipient of the Gordon Prize, and I am truly honored to be a colleague, a collaborator, and student of Dr. Azad M. Modney, the 2023 recipient of the NAE Burden M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and Technology Education. Thank you all.
Thank you so much, Mary Lee. It's always special to hear such meaningful words and about meaningful experience from our students. I should mention, we, um, it was mentioned that uh, Azad was brought here in 2009, and I want to acknowledge a person who was important for bringing me here, and that's a former chair of the ISE department, Jim Moore, now emeritus professor, who is here in the back. So thank you, Jim, for making this happen. Finally, I cannot restrain myself without making an analogy of this year's Gordon Prize with the Grand Challenger Scholars Program, winner of the last year's Gordon Prize. They, they share discovery, interdisciplinary innovation, cultural understanding, positive societal impact. We're very proud that they both emanated from this place at this campus. So thank you very much. Now, please enjoy your dinner. Distinguished guests, Please welcome Grigory Koval from the Thornton School of Music for a special performance. Hello, everyone. It is an honor for me to play for you tonight. And I will play one uh, short song by Miguel Llobet, a Catalan composer, which calls Romanza.
What a beautiful performance on a beautiful night. Thank you so much. It is really now my true honors and privilege to introduce John Anderson, president of the National Academy of Engineer, Engineering and a fellow chemical engineer. John became president of the National Academy of Engineering in 2019. His professional career has spanned 48 years in academia. He served as president of the Illinois Institute of Technology and as provost and executive vice president at Case Western Reserve University. His 28 years tenure on the faculty at Carnegie Mellon included eight years as dean of the College of Engineering and 11 years as head of the chemical engineering department. His first faculty appointment was in chemical engineering at Cornell. As a professor, he has taught classes to first year undergraduates all the way through to PhD students. He always has enjoyed learning from students. He has held visiting professorships at MIT as a Guggenheim Fellow, the University of Wageningen in the Netherlands, and the University of Melbourne in Australia. He has received a number of honorary doctorate degrees by the Illinois Institute of Technology, University of Delaware, and the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. John was elected to the National Academy of Engineering 31 years ago, if I do the math correctly, in 1992, for his, for his research on colloidal hydrodynamics and membrane transport. Those of you who don't know what, what this is, don't worry, it's real. <laughs> He's an elected member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the American Association for the Advancement of Science. He was also a presidential appointment to the National Science Board for the period 2014 to 2020. John received a bachelor's degree from the University of Delaware, a PhD from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, also in chemical engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, my honor and privilege to introduce Dr. John Anderson. Well, th th thank you, Giannis. Uh, on the 48 years in academia, I actually want to emphasize to the audience that I started when I was 15. So uh, don't uh, take it too seriously uh, here. Um, and uh, I wanted to make two comments off the script before I get into my, my script. Uh, the first is uh, that um, getting two Gordon Prizes in a row will probably never be done again. Uh, I wouldn't get my hopes up for a third. But uh, being in the committee, I can tell you that when, when a university faculty member wins one, then the next year, it's tougher for the second one because they got it last year, right? So it just tells you the bar that had to be achieved this year by Dr. Mondi. So congratulations, there's a lot of good things happening here. <clears throat> the second thing I wanna say is I, I'm just inspired by the, the uh, ceremony we had uh, giving medals out for the graduates of the, the uh, Grand Challenges um, student program today, the medallions and the certificates, I was impressed by how many women uh, are in engineering. And I found out for the last five years that the incoming classes here of, uh, in engineering as a whole is almost 50% women. And that's a huge achievement. And the only other school of this caliber that I know of that can come close to that is MIT. They were very early on. And it's so important for the engineering profession for us to bring all segments of our society, from all ethnic groups and races and, and women, into uh, the manpower and the, the human resources for engineering. So I, I really want to congratulate this engineering college and this university for doing an outstanding job in diversity, equity, and inclusion. So it's my great pleasure to welcome the award winner family and friends colleagues and guests of the Gordon Prize ceremony. I sincerely thank the University of Southern California President Carol Folt, uh, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs Elizabeth Grady, and incoming to be Provost Andrew Guzman for hosting this splendid event. I also want to recognize the 2023 Award Committee Chair Bill Paduska, NEE member,
who is unfortunately not able to be here tonight. Representing the award committee is immediate past chair Diane Chong, a member of NA, the NAE's council, the governing body of the NAE, and retired vice president of materials, manufacturing, structure, and support at Boeing Research and Technology and NAE. And I also want to introduce NAE officer, uh, executive officer Al Romig, who is retired as CEO from CEO of the Skunks Work, Lockheed Martin. Yeah. Now, some of you may not understand what the skunks works were. They make fighter airplanes. But he was called the chief skunk, and if you buy him a drink, he'll tell you all about it. <laughs> it is my privilege this evening to present the NEE's, indeed, the world's most prestigious award in engineering education, the Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and Technology Education, which I will do after a short video about the man behind the prize. Bernie Gordon couldn't be with us tonight. He sends his congratulations to the winner. Now we'll take a moment to learn a little bit about Mr. Gordon and his vision and enthusiasm for creating the prize. So we'll roll the video. The Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and Technology Education was inaugurated in 2002 by the National Academy of Engineering. The intent of the Gordon Prize is to recognize new modalities and experiments in education that develop effective engineering leaders. Now, for over 10 years, the Gordon Prize has recognized individuals that have innovated in areas such as curricula design, teaching methods, and technology-enabled learning that strengthen students' capabilities and desire to grow into leadership roles. The award was created to recognize professors, teachers, in technical institutions who understood that there was much more to engineering than learning theory and that there was a need to inculcate, not in everyone, because that's not possible, uh, an attitude. Uh, there's an old phrase that it takes knowledge, skills, and attitude to be a successful engineer, let alone an engineering leader. This knowledge, skills, and attitude propelled Bernard M. Gordon to found or contribute to multiple companies and institutions throughout his long career, earning over 200 patents, being awarded the National Medal of Technology, being inducted to the National Academy of Engineering, among numerous other honors and awards, in general, embodying the very spirit of his namesake award. So this attitude is one, you don't get born with it, it's one that gets developed by your teachers, the successes of your jobs, your understanding that after a while you're, you're expected to do that. It, it, and it's a hard thing to put into words. Fostering these leadership skills in engineering is vital to making the profession personally rewarding, successful in the competitive marketplace, and enriching to society at large. The Gordon Prize recognizes educational efforts that cultivate this leadership. Both the National Academy of Engineering and I together recognized that the educational process in technology had changed so much over the past decades that there was now a dearth of engineering leaders. It does not take a large percentage of engineers to be leaders. It's about the same ratio as a platoon leader to a combat platoon, you know, one in 20. If you can get one in 20 engineers to have the capability, the desire, the will uh, to be the leader, you increase the productivity tremendously. It's not about academic achievement. It's about industrial, real world, turning out products that society needs that will enhance the economy of the United States. 
These leadership qualities are critical to America's competitiveness in the 21st century. The teachers and educational approaches that are recognized by the Gordon Prize are an immense service to the engineering community, to the engineer as an individual, and make the world a better place for all. We will now uh, present the 2023 Gordon Prize. Uh, first, I want to recognize uh, Deborah Young, who runs the committee. And not only is she going to do that, she's going to make sure we stand in the right place up here on the stage and we do everything just right. So thank you, Deborah. Uh, would uh, Drs. Guzman, Chong, and uh, Yortsis please come to the stage so we can make the presentation? I thought I thought there was no script here. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> you have to improvise that. Uh, uh, now it's impromptu. There's my script. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. They they were just testing me, and so I uh, I didn't I didn't memorize it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so a little bit of information about the Gordon Prize. The Gordon Prize includes a $500,000 cash award, half granted to the recipient and the other half to the institution to support the continued development, refinement, and dissemination of the recognized innovation. The recipient also receives a commemorative medallion and hand-scribed certificate. In addition, the recipient is invited to present a public lecture on the prize-winning work during the NAE's annual meeting in Washington, D.C. However, Dr. Modney asked to present his lecture here at USC in front of his family, friends, and colleagues this afternoon. A wonderful gesture, in my opinion. Some of you heard this lecture earlier today. Azad, thank you uh, for that inspiring talk on your excellent program. And there's a lot of follow-up for all of us uh, in terms of what you said today. And now I'm pleased to officially announce the 2023 recipient of the Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering Technology Education to Dr. Azad M. Modney. Difficult. So we got to put everyone in. Well, we want to get everybody here. Okay. Are you good right here? Are you good? Yeah. Badges off? Yeah, you are. You good? Can you get them all in? You want me stand behind you? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And you want me to stay? No, I have two more words to say. Stay here, and then, then you have the microphone. Yep, you can go ahead. Right. Okay. Do Dr. Modney is being recognized for creating and disseminating a transdisciplinary systems engineering education paradigm based on entrepreneurial leadership, innovation, convergence, social awareness, and diverse thinking and experiences. Dr. Modney helped define the field of transdisciplinary systems engineering and is the creator of transdisciplinary systems engineering education, what we call TRACI. 
Through Tracy, Dr. Modney transformed USC systems architecting and engineering program curriculum by incorporating content from complementary disciplines. This redefined the teaching approach by combining storytelling and pedagogical principles from the learning process. At USC, Dr. Modney is university professor and holder of the Northrop Grumman Foundation Fred O. Green Chair in Engineering in the Viterbi School of Engineering. He is also the executive director of the Systems Architecting and Engineering Program, founding director of the Distributed Autonomy and Intelligent Systems Laboratory, and faculty affiliate of USC Ginsburg Institute for Biomedical Therapeutics. Dr. Mani is also founder and CEO of Intelligent Systems Technology, a high-tech R&D company specializing in transcapillary model-based approaches to scientific and societal problems of national and global significance. And he is the chief systems engineering advisor to Aerospace Corporation and a former distinguished visiting fellow at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory Space Microelectronics Center. Now my question is, Dr. Modney, when do you sleep? <laughs> That's a lot of work and it's a tremendous achievement. Elected to the NAE in 2021, Dr. Modney is a fellow of 10 professional science and engineering societies and the recipient of numerous honors and awards, including the 2023 IEEE Simon Ramo Medal for Exceptional Achievements in Systems Engineering and Systems Science. He earned his bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees in engineering from UCLA. <laughs> I learned a new word today, UCLA, okay, when you're on this campus. Please welcome Dr. Azad M. Madney to the stage. President Fold, soon to be Provost Andrew Guzman, Dean Yorsis, President Anderson, colleagues, family and friends, a good evening to you all. Receiving the NAE Bernard Gordon Prize is the crowning achievement of my academic career. It is truly an honor, not just for me, but also for all my students, fellow faculty members, and colleagues who have been part of my journey as an engineering educator. Many of them are here today. I would like to thank the Gordon Prize Award Committee for selecting me for this prestigious honor and Bernie Gordon and the NAE for creating this very special award to recognize excellence in engineering education. I also want to thank Norm Augustine and John Slaughter for their enthusiastic support and guidance as I embarked on my journey of transformation, of transforming systems engineering education. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the most important figure in my journey, my father, it was he who instilled in me the importance of education from a tender age. I have indelibly etched memories of my father routinely engaging with my teachers in elementary and high school, not so much to inquire how I was faring in my classes, but to learn about their methods, teaching methods. That memory stayed with me and is perhaps the main reason for my fascination with ed education and educational paradigms. Much of what I have accomplished as an engineering educator would not have been possible without the steadfast support of my wife, Carla, research collaborator, and above all, my soulmate. My personal education perspective is shaped in part by a couple of astute observations. The first is Winston Churchill's famous refrain, I'm always ready to learn, although I do not always like being taught. The second is Albert Camus, a French philosopher who famously opined when asked about lecturing students. Some people talk in their sleep. Lecturers talk while other people sleep. <laughs> I took these to heart and have carefully avoided the perils of traditional lecturing. With these considerations in mind, I approached engineering education in general and teaching in particular as a joint venture between learners and instructors with the instructor in the role of storyteller, facilitator, and guide and with learners engaging in active learning through story-driven role play, student-led discussions, and peer-to-peer -peer interactions. My past research has shown that storytelling principles from the entertainment arts could be combined with principles from the learning sciences to make the acquired knowledge more connected and therefore more useful. 
This approach works, is easily disseminated, and importantly, is exceedingly popular in our student and employer communities. These experiences led me to formally define the field of transdisciplinary systems engineering and the creation of TRACI, a new educational paradigm that reflects transdisciplinary systems engineering principles. TRACI exploits storytelling in conjunction with the principles of the learning sciences to make learning both effective and enjoyable. My wife, Carla, and I have designated the entirety of the 20, 250,000 Gordon Prize money to be retained by the NAE to create the Azad M. and Carla Madney Fund for Transdisciplinary Systems Engineering. <laughs> this fund is intended to support the NAE's robust efforts through a to a wide variety of activities such as lectures, forums, and research with a focus on transdisciplinary system engineering. In closing, I'm reminded of the late NAE President Chuck Vest's declaration. Chuck said, this is the most exciting time for science and engineering in human history. With respect to system engineering and system engineering education, I will say this is the most historic era for system engineering and system engineering education in recent memory. My sincere thanks to the NAE and the Turby team for planning this wonderful event and to Dean Yorsis for making it all happen. Thank you all for attending this special event. I will cherish the memory, memories from tonight. It is said Life is a series of meetings and partings, meetings to create memories and partings to preserve them. After tonight, my family and I will have a lot of memories to treasure and preserve. Thank you all once again for being here to celebrate the special evening. Thank you. Our motto at the NAE is to do great things and to do good things, and Dr. Madney exemplifies both of those. So thank you, Azad, for everything. We are pleased to recognize you as the esteemed 2023 Gordon Prize recipient. And now I turn the podium back over to Dean Yorsis to conclude this presentation. I sincerely thank all of you for attending this wonderful celebration. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. Thank you, Azad. Your awards cap a terrific evening. We're proud of what you have accomplished and what you will undoubtedly continue to achieve. We'd like to thank the university senior um, uh, administrators who are here today, including Elizabeth Crady, the provost, and Andrew Guzman, the provost, uh, the incoming provost. And to everyone here, this has been a very special evening to celebrate engineering educational excellence. Thank you for being here. I venture to say that with the probability of the Gordon Prize being awarded to UC faculty next year being infinitesimally small, <laughs> we are unlikely to see you next year. Unless, of course, we come up with a different award to keep the tradition going. So there's ways to do that. Have a safe drive home and fight on.